Hi, I'm Morgan Ortegas, and with me is John Shames. John and I have been working with Zurich and the Atlantic Council on a new joint piece, Borders versus Barriers, Navigating Uncertainty in the Business Environment. We, in particular, surveyed close to 500 global CFOs from 30 countries. And not surprisingly, the survey found that a majority of these CFOs are very optimistic about the U.S. economy and doing business in the U.S. But there is a caveat. They are concerned about inward-facing and protectionist policies that may restrict their ability to do business cross-border or really anything that will affect their supply chain. Where do you think this optimism comes from? Well, look, you know, clearly tax reform is a driver. As, as the overall perception of doing business in the U.S. today is, as the President would indicate, open for business. But another driver is the optimism in the speed in which the new administration has relaxed business regulations. One of the things that I found interesting in this report is that during a period of record stock market highs and incredibly low unemployment, business leaders still have a lot of uncertainty according to this research. What do you think this report informs us about the uncertainty of doing business in the U.S.? We just spoke about all the positive things that we're seeing with the U.S. economy, but at the same time there's all these geopolitical events taking place around the world and business leaders are confused. And our view in this report is that to navigate this uncertain geopolitical environment, companies need what we call a geostrategy. And this involves not only bold scenario planning, but developing a strategy to minimize risk. A company has to understand its exposure to geopolitical issues around the world. And a company should consider global footprint assessment in which they evaluate their supply chain, their people, their corporate functions, their stockholders, and how each of these can be affected by geopolitics. Secondly, companies can prepare for geopolitical risk by understanding the need to invest in knowledge, networks, and relationships with key decision makers. And finally, when it comes to geopolitics, companies have got to act. They can create a flexible organization with an open culture. They should develop a robust public affairs strategy based on political risk analysis. And they can proactively engage with stakeholder and policymakers, and not just the national level, but the local level as well. I encourage all of our viewers to go to ey.com where you can read the full report.